Thank goodness. I thought you were going to put up Castel Gandolfo for a second. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. Thank you for all your support on the first three videos of the new 2023 to 2024 season. This is episode four and the final episode of our Horses to Follow series. How does that make you feel? Feels a little bit sad or emotional. But at the same stage, it does mean that this is wrapping up, that the season is getting closer and closer. We did shoot the gun a little bit early this year. We did. I think with good, good reason. And plenty of decent content coming between now and the likes of Chepstow. Just thinking of Chepstow, I was thinking of Cheltenham today putting this list of horses together. I got, I got me giddy. October's not too far away. We're talking two months. I know. Tell me about it. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh. Now, I don't want a repeat of what happened at half one on the Saturday of the October meeting last year with poor old Rex Meister, but it, it can only get better than that, surely. It can only get better than that. And hopefully, absolutely hopefully uh, you do enjoy this series if you have please hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do get your comments down below wonderful to see a hundred comments on the last video Ooh. it was great reading through all of those and replying to them so if you've got any comments any questions do let us know and in fact a little sneak preview of next week's video and we need your help to do it next week's video is going to be a pre-season q a ask whatever you want. If it's about Cheltenham, if it's about Aintree, if it's about Leopardstown, if it's about Cartmel, we want to hear your questions. A horse, a trainer, if there's anything you want to know that you might think that we might be able to find out from a trainer, jockey or anything, then let us know and we'll try our absolute best. It's going to be a, a, a pre-season special. Ask away whatever you want, get them down in the comments and we'll try our absolute best. But Let's kick on um, the current, not standings, but the current table of horses that we've put up. Uh, last week I added three Paul Nichols horses. Lots of uh, debate and, and a bit of stick, rightly so, from the comments last week. Um, right, so, yeah. Talking about the three Paul I actually Paul enjoyed Nichols those horses. comments the most. Yeah, it, it did hurt a little bit. But I think what, what Some of my is, burner accounts <laughs> actually are really going well. <laughs> I, I, I think what it is, is... I would have likely, I think if you were a betting man, you'd have probably said I'd have put three Paul Nichols horses up in this series. If you gave me 12 horses to follow, I probably would have done three. I just did them all in the same week. But what part of you thought, though, that that was the idea? Because I thought the, the strict idea was it was meant to be one horse per trainer. Like, I could have just given you 12 Paul Nolan nags if I'd known that was the case. Now, to be fair, I wouldn't put it past you. Well, that is true. <laughs> um, but I put up, in the waterside as a potential grade one horse, I put up uh, Fireflyer as another potential high graded class novice hurdler and then on LTR Ultra I put up Thames Water which is kind of more of a personal thing I just think he's quite good and I was really impressed with that Scott run uh, if you do want to know the reasoning and maybe the interesting reasonings why they put that up you need to go and subscribe to LTR Ultra what were your last three? I put up Firefox, who I believe is Gordon Elliott's Lawler as an ace horse for this year. I'd be very disappointed if he's not competing in grade ones. Had to get one from Ali McKinnon in the team. It's just a necessity at this stage. Kalanisi Star was that horse. Thought he was a little disappointing last year, but I think he'll be better over fences this year. And my horse from LTR Ultra was for our good friend Ali Murphy in the Waitley Colours, a bumper horse from last year called Booster Bob. Not the one everyone's thinking of, which is in Divar Blue, who could win by any amount. And Fingers crossed he does to a certain extent, but Booster Bob, I have it in my head, he is no risk day flow 2.0. This is the year that Ollie Murphy trained his second grade one winner. Hopefully, we have all fingers crossed. That's, imagine if it's Booster Bob. Oh, that would be unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is, is I, I want that to happen so badly. I do look at his horses and go, where's it coming from? But, strong leader. Yep. In Divar Blue, Chasing hopefully. Chasing fire in Divar Blue. Hopefully horses that can take him to the top table. And we'd love that. LTR is a massive, massive advocate of Ollie Murphy racing. Um, my 10th horse to follow for this series is a horse trained up in the north, Nicky Richards, and it's soft risk. We haven't seen him for over a year. He was ruled out of last season due to injury, but I'm banking on him coming back in a similar, similar vein of form. He won a bumper. He won three novice hurdles on the trot and then he finished second in two competitive handicaps up in the north. And I just feel a mark of 128 is slightly underestimating his ability. He looks a massive 
big frame of a horse a horse i know it's a very typical thing to say but every inch a chaser he's, he, he looks like hurdles were just simply getting in the way and he really wanted to attack those larger obstacles he's a, a strong traveler and i just feel that if he goes chasing which was the plan this time last year he can really make a mark in some of those big northern novice chases i know there's a couple of, of uh graduation chases and novice chases up at, at carlisle which are worth a lot of money and i can see him being campaigned i know different trainers different owners but i can see him being campaigned campaigned in a similar way to Tommy's Oscar in his Novice Chase campaign, those Newcastle competitive races, as well as Carlisle. And I can see him definitely going down that route. And then maybe shaking it up in greater company come the spring festivals. Not saying the Arkle, but maybe a, a, a one of the handicaps at Aintree or something like that. I just feel that soft risk of 128, whether he sticks hurdling or goes chasing, which I think will be the plan, could be well handicapped. Yeah, no, I agree completely with that. I'm sure an awful lot of our viewers will be you know, delighted to see that you know that racing exists north of Ditchet. <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. Thanks for that. Just, just, yeah, you put me away. I'm, I'm buried over here. You kick on. Well, my 10th horse to follow, usually when you're looking at your football team, you're looking at the number 10. He's, he's your best player. He's your playmaker. He's your goal scorer. He does it all. The captain of the team is my 10th. And it comes from Willie Mullins. I have to get Willie in there. And it's a horse that I've actually seen. One or two people in the comments have cottoned on to a horse that I'm quite interested in. And it's a horse called Nick Rocket, who won the Grade 2 Novice Hurdle at Fairy House at the back end of last season. He started off last season in a bumper at Fairy House, the sales bumper, uh, won by Dr. Bravo at the Hatton's Grace meeting. He was fourth that day. A little bit disappointing, a bit raw in the run. Got outpaced before staying on. He then went to Thurless under Charlie Mullins and they made an awful lot more use of him on this occasion where they booked out in front in a bumper that, to be fair, given you've paid 90 grand for, for him, a winning point-to-point -point horse, you'd be expecting him to win. But I was, I enjoyed the way he did it turning in. Again, he looked raw, he looked green out in front, but yet he quickened up very nicely and put good distance between himself and his rivals. They didn't mess around. They went over hurdles after that. He ran in a nice maiden hurdle next time out now i must confess this horse's jumping was nothing more than deplorable he went down to the first he backed off it jumped to the right went down to the second did the exact same thing it marginally improved as the race went on but paul townen was at pains to keep him on the inside because he was jumping markedly right he just wasn't looking an easy conveyance and yet still had it in him to go and pick up a decent horse in Let's Go Champ, who you've made a, a very good case for earlier on in the Let's Talk Racing Horses to Follow videos. And I just thought that was very interesting. And the fact that they just pitched him into Grade 2 company next time out, I think it was one of those ones where you've won your maiden hurdle, you may as well just pitch him in, considering they probably knew he's going to go chasing. So see where he gets on. And he was absolutely superb this day. His jumping had really improved, I thought. Uh, he ended up winning the race by, by 15 lengths from the company sergeant and Parmenian. Now, Parmenian's been a little bit of a disappointment for the Mullins yard. Uh, he took it up from the Gunnar Yates, who unfortunately was an ill-fated faller at two out in the race. But he was going to win the race. Other than that, at that stage, he jumped slickly. He jumped well. And he put, again, distance between himself and his rivals. Now, I'm looking at Nick Rocket, and I'm looking at his future credentials. And I know we're not going to say anything in terms of anti-post bets at this stage of the season, because that will come later on in the year. There's a book coming. But I think there are worse bets out there. When you look at anti-post markets and you look at how poor some of them are, how little value there is out there, I think there are a lot worse bets in there than backing this horse at 25 to 1 for the brand advisory next season. He will go chasing. And I've got an interesting angle on this, and I'm not really a stats and statistics man myself. But when you look at this grade 2 novice hurdle at Fairy House, the type of horses that Mullins has ran in it in the last number of years, Braun won the race, ran in the Oris or the Brown Advisory last year. Castleborn West, an easy game, were close up in the race. They went to the Brown Advisory the next year. My great friend Album Photo won the race, went to the Brown Advisory the next year. So it just Shane's Hill did the same, Acapella Bourgeois did the same. It seems to be a bit of a route that Willie mm. takes. And I'm not saying this horse is going to be as good because this is a big lofty thing of me to say. It's something you would say actually about Paul Nichols' horses where you're comparing to Brave Man's Game. But this horse does remind me of Album Photo. He doesn't look spectacular. He jumps 
strangely, but gets from A to B, but and, and seems to be constantly impressing the likes of Willie Mullins, the likes of Ruby Walsh, the likes of Paul Townend, without ever seemingly setting the world alight at home. And yet he keeps on improving. And I don't think they have any clue how much more improvements to come. And those are the type of horses I want to keep on side. There we go, Nick Rocket. Are you have you backed him? For the Brown Advisory? I have backed him for the Brown Advisory myself, and I enlisted for my help and then for feeling good about myself, Jake Price, to tell me more about this horse. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, I'm not Willie Mullins, but hopefully I can give you a good steer on Nick Rocket either way. And I think it's safe to say that following a 405-day break at Fairy House, he really did need that first bumper start where he looked a little bit slow. He came on for the run and went and won on his next bumper start, but again, he won it in the style of a horse who has a stamina and abundance rather than much speed. He really ground out the result. So I think it was at this point where Connections decided, look, what's the point in going to hotter spring bumpers when it, you know he's probably going to get outpaced? When he's a six-year-old turning seven in January and we can just go straight over hurdles with him. So that's exactly what they did. They stepped him up to two mile, three and a half furlong, which really did suit him. But if you go back and watch his hurdles debut, he jumped so big on every single hurdle. He was literally jumping them like fences already. So it's suggesting to me that, you know, he's a horse who's going to want to go over fences very soon. And that's probably going to happen this season. Um, but what happened afterwards is that a lot of people underestimated him for that grade two at Fairy House. And I was actually there that day. The ground was pretty brutal for a spring festival. Um, it was officially yielding, but five ended up being pulled up in the race. So it tells you what type of race it was. And Nick Rocket really did take up the running and stay on really strongly stepping up in trip once again. So going up to three miles, going novice chasing, he could really be towards the top of Willie Mullins' pile this year. A glowing report. Um, That's as good a report as I've given all year. <laughs> it is, it really the is. The captain of the team, this Number guy. 10, captain. Well, who's number 10 for Villa? Buendia, I think he's out for the suit. Andy, Buendia. Um, yeah. that, that, you you, you knew not, that was the answer as well. You've actually just jabbed me on purpose. He's he's not... Uh, yeah, he's probably not the best player that you've got, but uh, a good player nonetheless. Good player, nonetheless. And hopefully Nick Rocket can play a stronger part in your team uh, than, than Emmy can for uh, Villa. Uh, but my 11th horse to follow for the upcoming National Hunt season is a horse trained by Fergal O'Brien. This is at the other end of the spectrum. I think this horse is well handicapped off a mark of 112 right down there and it's a horse called school days over thank goodness i thought you were going to put up castel gandolfo for a second thank goodness we've got a new name we, on the we do not have that he is the new castel gandolfo hopefully we're we'll running in very similar races but the reason why i wanted to put this horse up is because he won a market raisin bumper he then finished second in the listed bumper at the cheltenham november meeting behind gentle slopes and there's been six subsequent winners in that race um none of them really kicking on to, to real height other than Cotate Dory for Sam Thomas, who, who keep keep running in the he kept running in the the graded bumpers um, towards the back end of the season. A hurdling Davy, who's beaten four lengths by Hansard, who is now rated 140, and was only beaten four lengths by in the pocket in the Grade One two mile novice hurdle at Aintree, and then second that day was also Father of Jazz who was disappointed for the Skeletons, but having since moved to James Owen, has racked up three wins on the trot. He's now rated 130, and at the time he was rated 101 on the flat. So it's a good form there. He was pulled up on his next start. He's rated 112. I think he is better than that. I think he's possibly 120 to, to 125. That type yeah. of horse might have a, a stone in hand. Um, and all I'm going to say is the first race ran at Cheltenham every year. Comes at the October meeting. Thurgood O'Brien has won that race two times in the last four years. If he runs in there, I'd love that. I can definitely see that type of campaign for him. Has got Cheltenham form, and I just think he's better than 112, and they might have that type of race in mind. He just wants to keep on the side for a big pot early in the season. Yep, no, I can't disagree with any of that. And I remember we went to Fergal's Yard one year, I think before the November meeting, and there's there's also conditional jocks race at the November meeting, and they they all told us that our approval would run well. We went, ah, can't see it, can't see it. Horse won by five lengths. Did go and win by five lengths. So he's my 11th horse to follow. I liked that an awful lot, I must confess. Now, I was looking for my 11th horse to follow, and I was thinking... 
You know a race we haven't really touched on, Josh? <laughs> is this Aintree Bumper? Uh, honestly, I don't think we've, we've watched it. Has any, anyone ever seen that one? Well, I actually haven't seen it once on, on these videos, but I've decided to squeeze the lemon one uh, last time. Fair enough. And I've gone in... Wait, uh, how many times have we actually mentioned that? I think quite a lot. Because even Kim Barra was in Kim the race. Kim Barra, yeah. And now... We're looking at Bowens Park for Henry Daly. A really nice horse. There's a really big horse. I know it's very easy and very probably, you know, you're, you're looking at it being, it's a, it's a bit too simple to just compare them to Hillcrest. But there are glaring similarities. A big frame of a horse. He wants a trip and I think he wants obstacles in front of him as well. He won on debut for Henry Daly, which is very unlike Henry Daly, to be honest, in the bumper sphere. He won at Utoxter. Unfortunately, we can't show you that, but we can show you when he won at Warwick on New Year's Eve, where he beat Katati, Dory, and Masaccio, who you obviously have a, a soft affection for. And I can see why, because I think this race is a good piece of form, to be honest. He was a little bit behind the bridle, especially turning in, and I felt that those two horses had gotten away from him, especially the Sam Thomas horse. And when you're looking at the footage of Furlong down, you think there's no way on earth the Bowens Park can get up here. He slightly cocks his jaw to one side when he's under pressure, which is a little bit of a concern, I suppose. That would want to be ironed out. And I think it will be as he just learns and learns on the job. But he ends up getting up on the line, and I think that was good form. He went to the Newbury Bumper, a race that you eulogise over, and I can completely understand and why he tried to go off prominently just didn't have the tactical pace and when you saw them coming out of the back straight he suddenly in last that's nowhere near where Richard Patrick would have wanted to have been got himself far too far behind and ended up plugging on for fourth never th threatening the leaders but again not a bad performance in its own right and the final piece of footage we have is of that Aintree bumper that we have seen so many times at this stage you probably know every single horse in the race but again he lined up prominent under Richard Patrick and he was able to stay there for longer which I feel just means he's slightly learning to be more professional he's learning on the job as we go but that being said when they quickened turning for home the likes of blizzard of oz went on he then got short for room he lost his spot and i think a much lesser horse would have been more than entitled to go out the back of the telly at this stage and finish 10th or 11th in that race in with the the riffraff in the mid division but instead he got a second wind under Richard Patrick and when you look at his final furlong there was no horse staying on better than him and it was really really eye catching he's a two and a half mile novice hurdler for me this year i suspect he's the type of horse given what happened with hillcrest and given that they probably I don't think they went to the well one too many times, but they gave him a few tough races. Wouldn't surprise me if this horse is relatively softly campaigned. We might see him in one of those races at Cheltenham, whether that's on New Year's Day or maybe at the trials meeting, those Ballymore Novice mm. Hurdle trials. I think that's the type of races he'll be involved in. I just don't think they'll maybe go and run him at Haydock like they did with Hillcrest and then back him up in an Albert Bartlett because that may have been uh, what, what happened there. So I think Bowens Park is a really, really nice horse but that being said i have to enlist the biggest henry daly enthusiast that the game has of blenkinsop fame that is dan overall oh andrew now you're talking my language the mckinn and Nax are a bit out of my comfort zone but henry daly stayers that's what we're talking about and i think in bowens park he has a really nice prospect he won on his bumper debut which not many henry daly horses do i think only four and since 2014 have done that which paints that achievement in some light. And that was a steadily run race, which would not have suited him. I mean, you look at that race back, and Charlie Deutsch did such a nice job getting him into a rhythm, really green when he first asked to pick up, but got him going eventually under hands and heels, and he won nicely. The race has worked out pretty well. The two and behind one of a hurdle since, and the fourth actually won a listed race, uh, a mare's bumper, although it wasn't the greatest renewal. And then he went to Warwick under a penalty in a race that I think is actually pretty decent. He beat Katate Dory of San Thomas, who I actually think is a very useful prospect in his own right. And Masaccio, who I know Josh is a fan of as well, was back in third. And again, still looked green. Didn't look like he was going to get there, but again, slowly got going to peg back the San Thomas horse close to home. Wasn't suited by the quicker going on the emphasis on speed the time after that. I was at Newbury in a race again, I think was decent. Masaccio was in that race as well. 
No shame in that run was just not suited by the conditions of the way it was run. And it was a similar story at Aintree as well, really. Like, he was squeezed out when the race began to develop as he turned for home, lost a few places at a crucial stage. Green, again, when asked to pick up, hung slightly. But again, there was nothing really finishing much stronger than him. And that seems to have been a theme of his races so far. And he did well to grab fourth on that occasion. Look, he shapes like a stayer. There's an abundance of stamina on his damn side. She's by Westerner. She won over two and a half miles. She related to multiple winners who won over two and a half and further, including the Westerner boy who actually went off four to one favorite for the Fiestes. That's two for two references for the Fiestes in these videos. I might go with three for three if you invite me back. But the downside of him, I guess, is he does have his quirks. He does carry his head a bit awkwardly. He isn't the finished article just yet. But if he does mature and the time off has done him well, I think this is only a graded horse over hurdles, especially in novice hurdle division this year. I think you're looking at the likes of the listed and the grade two uh, Ballymore novice hurdles at Cheltenham that run on New Year's Day and on Trials Day. They're the races that Hillcrest ran in as well for Henry Daly. You can definitely draw comparisons between the two. It'll be interesting to see how far he can go. You'd say in time, three miles is definitely going to suit him. Two and a half on soft ground should be fine initially. And as he develops, he should be a smashing three mile chaser. This horse had no right to run how he did in bumpers. He's enormous. He is a big, big beast. And he ran so well against good, younger, probably more forward types. I'd have thought so, yeah. yeah. I mm. I would like to think this horse will win an awful lot of races. The only problem, like genuinely the only problem I see with him is because of his size and like you see what happens with the likes of Hillcrest, top of the game. They are hard horses to keep sound at times. It didn't seem like there was any issues last year. Mm. He had a perfect bumper campaign. He ran four times. I'd love to see that repeated. And I think if it does get repeated, he'll win an awful lot of races. No, I do like that a lot. And we do hope that you've enjoyed all of the episodes of the horses to follow on Let's Talk Racing. If you have, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And our final horse of the series will be over on LTR Ultra. You can subscribe to that by clicking on our channel on a desktop or laptop, and then you'll see next to our name, there's a button saying join. Press that and you'll see all the details to join right there. We do hope you've enjoyed this series. We've really enjoyed it. And get your questions in for next week's Q&A. Look forward to doing it and we'll see you then.